Welcome to What the Bl It's like Housewives of Beverly Hills, if by Beverly Hills you mean a trailer park in Appalachia. For a preview of tonight's show, we join Timothy Walton in our legal department. Timothy, what do we have in store for tonight's show? Today, we are discussing ethics, particularly in the workplace. Can respect among coworkers improve the bottom line? Or does respect and cooperation lead to a weakening of an individual's moral fiber? Maybe it's both. Jim? Hey, Timothy, you better go check up on the ambulance. Uh, maybe the cops coming. But anyways, they are so awesome, the Pope came to America just to meet them. But enough about illegal alien transvestite nuns. Let's meet our panel. In the far chair, she knows heavenly bodies like I know dead ones. I moonlight as a grave digger, people. It's astrophysicist Andrea Albert. In the middle chair, it's aspiring actress Kate Manbear. She's so charming, she convinced the Pope to officiate a gay wedding between two nuns, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> In between them, he's the host of John Wants Answers. It's John Bink. If modesty was a dumpling, I'd stick my meaty filling inside of him. Finally, sitting next to me because he drew the short straw, he's a writer, actor, director, and the most famous person you've never heard of, it's C.J. Silverman. If logic was a pommel horse, gymnasts would mount him repeatedly during the Olympics. Yeah. <laughs> Issue number one, when thinking of others, will the risky option you smother? According to a new study from the University of Texas at Dallas, who knew? Uh, people who make more conservative choices when the decisions they make affect other people. Conservative researchers conducted experiments in a laboratory setting where they could study the subject's behavior under controlled conditions at the University of Cologne in Germany, which I assume is sister city of the University of Perfume. Anyways, researchers compared risk-taking through simple games in which the players chose between two options that led to different payoffs. Some sets of questions determine the subject's own payoff, while others determine the payoff for the subject and another player. Researchers found that the social preferences for balanced payoff played a role in risk taking. The subjects made safer decisions when the risk was extended to another subject. I think we have some of the research footage here. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, the Russians, the rednecks of the East. Anyways, um, <laughs> let's see, who am I going to start mm -hmm. off with here? Uh, hey, Andrea, I'll start off with you. Uh, thinking of others makes you more conservative. Uh, profound insight or an observation of the obvious? Well, uh, it made me think of one of the first questions my husband asked me when we started dating was, do you have faith in humankind? Right. Uh, and I said yes, because I'm an internal optimist. So the results of this study kind of made me happy that people would not risk others Okay. well-being if it was All on right. the chopping block so there. does that mean that you, you 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 agree you believe the findings i'd like to believe the findings okay but whether or not you actually <laughs> believe the findings is a different question right that's true i would uh, as a scientist i would have to look at them a bit more closely to, okay well let's yeah. like um as a scientist do you really believe social science are social scientists are really scientists or are they just people who can get into physics school no Oh, they're definitely scientists. Uh, they maybe can't come to as extreme, like as firm conclusions as other sciences do, but it's definitely a science. They, it, it's a lot harder to control like people than to control a bunch of protons. Okay. So, you know, I Is feel that a for good them. thing or a bad thing? <sighs> I'm gonna go with mm. good thing. All right. Okay. I like free will. Okay. There you go. Oh, so you believe in free will? Okay. Physicist sure. believes in free will. Gotcha. All right. Kate, <laughs> what, what's your mm -hmm. take? Uh, profound insight or observation of the obvious? Um, I thought it was obvious because, um, especially as a mother, I'm always thinking about, you know, am I, is this going to hurt my family? Is it going to hurt my mother-in-law? And then family gets bigger all the time. So, well, let me ask you a question. Uh, yes. You have kids. Yes. Right. So, before kids, did you have? Did you, did you think of getting tattoos? No, okay. I never thought of getting tattoos. Were you more or less prone to getting tattoos before or after having kids? Um, hmm, probably uh, more because I had already experienced extreme pain of having the children. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. So that, that's that's a, is that is that is that example of the rule or exception to the rule? Um, I'm not completely sure it's relevant to the rule. Okay. Because I just randomly. Because that's just pain for me. It's okay. not a group thing. Okay. Hey, John, as a person who is who has no social responsibility to anybody besides yourself, what's your <laughs> take on this? Damn it, Jim. <laughs> um, I can go two ways on this. Um, 
So when I drive my car and I'm alone in the car, right. I drive a lot faster and riskier than if I have a passenger in the car. Okay. Because you don't want to freak people out. Okay. But on the other hand, if you're going to make a risky decision and that you think might go south, you know the expression, misery loves company. Maybe you want someone there with you to, to take down mm-hmm. <laughs> as well. Okay. If you're going to be taken down, have someone there with you. So in the car, are you worried about them judging you or are you actually worried about their safety? Um, I'm usually more mm-hmm. distracted with having a conversation with them, mm. so I... You're all self-conscious. Yeah. yeah so yeah. You're, you're too uh-huh. distracted to be, to, to be a to jerk. Too risky. You're too distracted to be a risk-taking jerk, right? I guess so. Right. should hang out with people more often. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get anyone on time that way. Hey, hey CJ, you, 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 know, you have a you interaction with the people of a, of a, of a young age, uh, the risk-taking age, uh, what, 18 to 22, is that right? That's about correct, <laughs> right. yeah. Um, and that, that's actually a, a vocation rather than something that requires a court order to keep you away from, right? Well, I won't go into that right now, but uh, you know, talking about ethics, I'm not really allowed to divulge what my lawyer told me. Oh, okay. So what's your take on this? Well, there's an old adage, and it is that ethics means that you do the right thing when nobody's looking. Right. But then that all got twisted when I went to law school, so now I'm completely confused about the concept of social responsibility or ethics. Uh, now I like to think doing the right thing when nobody's looking may still be relevant, but it depends what you're doing, I guess, well, when people are looking. Sometimes when I'm looking at other people, I'm not doing the right thing. Yeah, but when no one else is looking, can you still be thinking about other people? Yes. Like when you're well, like when you're having sex, right? <laughs> well, well, yes. <laughs> not, not with the 18 to 24 year old, so. Of course. Okay, when you're by yourself. Well, correct. That's, that's true. You're, you're thinking about other people. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, often. Okay. All right. I'm not thinking about myself. I'm thinking about pleasing no, the no, other person. No, no, no. You're, you're not John Vick, so you're okay. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> at, least, at least for the time being. <laughs> uh, don't worry, John. We'll explain it to you at the they, break. They're all, they are all very happy. I'll have you know. No, I don't think he, he got. He's went over his head. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you, the astrophysicist got it, but but the, the techie. Mm-hmm. Hey, I'm not hey, a doctor. There you go. That's right. <laughs> hey, issue number two: If your manners are refined, will you will it help the bottom line? A new study by the University of Michigan mm-hmm. professor Jane Dunn that's, indicates that workers who are treated with respect reach higher levels of creativity. Believe it or not, yeah. She found that engaging respectfully at work creates creative behavior by individuals and teams. Respectful engagement is defined by behavior such as recognizing another person, dumbass, uh, understanding and appreciating them, eh, and listening and attending to their needs, emphasizing another's good qualities, fatso, and making requests, not demands. Could you not do that? Anyways, researchers also looked at relational information processing, which is what the hell that is. How organizational members use conversation to reflect upon their own goals and work. Sounds like psychotherapy to me. Uh, for more, we turn to Professor Dutton, who just came back from the dentist. Professor hey. Dutton, tell us more about your study. Where are we? Where are we? Where are we? No, she's been coasting uh, on that since she got there. You tenure. are at home. <laughs> oh, no. Gauze. Peter. No, no, don't touch it. <laughs> I know what, isn't there a skater named Fleming? Don't, don't touch it. Oh. You had your wisdom yeah. teeth out. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, professor. You know that professor Dunn is really smart. She looks really young to be a professor, but yeah, a little yeah. on the young maybe side. precocious. So, right, you're, you're not yeah. threatened at all, Andrea, are you? No. Okay, there you go. All right, I'm going to start with John. Um, respect helps group creativity. Do you agree or disagree with this premise? Damn it, Jim. Um, I worked at a company called Apple for a long time, mm-hmm. and I had this guy running the joint who was not respectful at all. Right? He'd yell at people, call them bozos. It's two extremes. Either you were like a bozo, or you were like a a good guy, I guess. Well, I heard they made a movie, Adam, that you 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 talked about on your show, and you I've, praised very highly. If I remember. I've I've been in a recent movie with him. Yeah. I don't know if you've seen it. Yeah. Steve Jobs, Man in the Machine. I appear in the movie twice. Oh, okay. There you Ooh. go. Um, that movie basically portrayed him as being a real. So, ass, you know. so yeah. What's your take on this then? Um, I, the, the article I said about creativity, I'm not sure. I think um, the desire to please a manager who is hard to please, that might really push you to be creative. Does a crew should be creative, it just makes that you work harder. 
Well, you work harder too. Oh, yeah. okay. Because mm -hmm. the two are not necessarily the same as we've come to see, right? I think people who are too creative are basically people who are slacking off. Okay. Like they're not working hard. They're like thinking of ways to make a quilt, okay. which is not useful if your job is to process TPS forms. So wait a minute, then by that logic then treating people with respect as leads people to, to slack off and not take their job seriously? I think so. Oh, okay. Was that the secret mm -hmm. to the, the success of your previous employer? That is a secret There's success. Oh, okay. Slacking off? No, no, no. It's to like not give respect, damn it. Okay, so you don't uh -huh. agree with this at all? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not so sure about this. All right. Yeah. Well, we'll take, well, we'll take a more of a public sector setting here. Hey, CJ, you work in the public sector on occasion, right? What, I do. Is it, is it filled, is it rife with, with respectful dialogue amongst your peers? Well, we often have a, a conversation about what do employees want in the workplace? Do they want increased pay? more yes. benefits yes. or do they yeah, want absolutely. acknowledgement right yes. and it seems yeah. like the ones that want acknowledgement don't want acknowledgement so much for their actions but for their creative endeavors oh okay are, are there a lot of creative people in the public sector that you've observed yes but they're being creative when they're supposed to be diligent which as john also indicated you know why why work on a quilt when you're trying to process forms it doesn't really correlate Oh, is that is that what you're doing when you're acting, writing, and directing when you should be teaching kids? Pretty much. Oh, okay. It's it's all a show, Jim. Oh, it's all a show. I'm <laughs> pretending like I know more than the students. Would that also explain the DM the, the efficiency and the creativity of the DM Department of Motor Vehicles? I have no comment on that. All right, all right. Oh my God, we took too much time with John, so we got a minute left. So I'm going to split the thirty seconds. Andrea, <laughs> in, in the academic setting, is it is it filled with uh, respectful dialogue and interaction? Oh, absolutely not. I have people who will come in my office and say, "What the." F are you doing working on that? Yeah. Why would you waste your time on that? But what I've learned is that when they say that, it's very sweet. Oh. They don't <laughs> want you to waste their time. Oh. Or they don't want you to waste your time on something that they think is a pile of it's shit. Like, right? It's like so. your parents. They, they, they're hard on you because they love you? Exactly. Well, and physicists tend not to bull around. Oh. And so yeah. they get right to the point. So if they're hard right. on you because they love you, would that explain the uh, little domestic violence incident that, we, that you had with the police the other day? Oh. I have no comment on that. All right. <laughs> Kate. Yes. As an, you now you're in the acting field. I uh, am. Is it filled with people who treat each other respectfully and with dignity and all that garbage? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're in a creative field. Well, um, yes. Usually, when when it works better, there's more respect and trust. Okay. So, I would say, yeah. I'm gonna take your word on because we're out of time. On to our first break, and we are back from our first break. Hey, issue number three. Do our work toils ebb if we are surfing the web? Uh, British professor Peter Fleming explores why people seem to waste so much time at work. He concludes that the act of working is no longer about survival and self-preservation, but has morphed into a meaningless and painful routine. Sounds like my relationship life. Uh, quote, the ritual of work is used to maintain a status quo set by neoliberal capitalism. Oh, we get to see where this is going. As society is transformed into a factory that never sleeps, work becomes a universal reference point for everything else devoid of any moral or social worth, unquote. That just kind of describes my whole life. Uh, speaking of which, uh, Speaking of Are you going to fix this in post? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah I, I assume that guy's really productive with his time mm -hmm. whipping people in harmonica plan. Let's see here. All right, um, let's see here. Uh, I'll start with you, CJ. We waste a lot of time at work because it's no longer about survival. Agree or disagree? Well, here's the thing. The worst job I've ever had was where I had to look busy, but I had nothing to do. That drove me nuts. So what we decided to do was to implement spanking, and it seemed to really help the workflow and also productivity. Uh, what job was that? That was at a, a litigation firm where we were advancing <laughs> funds to injured people uh, that they had their cases on appeal but they need a little bit of a funding oh. injected in their matter so oh. they could pay their mortgages. Oh, okay. So, oh, okay. So almost like peach tree. Kind of. Yeah, kind of like peach tree. Okay. So huh. were you were you a partner or an associate? Oh, I was a sales guy. Oh, you're a sales guy. Yeah. Okay. Were uh, you, underling. Were you a spanker or a spanky or a little bit of both? It depended on the day of the week. Oh. Uh, Wednesdays I was a spanker. I remember that vividly. Oh, okay. And you don't remember the spanky? I just remember the sexual harassment suit that came as a result of it. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. Well, 
Oh, it was fun, fun, fun. It was. It was all fun. All right. All right. I had to testify against myself, which was kind of strange. Right. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so again, survival, agree or disagree? I agree. All right. All right, Andrea. And uh, disagree. What's your, what's your take on this? Work has become more about, <laughs> less about survival and self-preservation and more just going through the motions. So I could always be doing work right. uh, at any given time. And that's been my way, it, that's been the way it is for me for a long, long time. Right. And so I've gotten very used to just saying, you know what, no, I've done enough today, I'm going home. Okay. Uh, but I feel like I'm a bit of a rare case. Uh, also, when, I, when I'm at work, I work. I don't watch YouTube videos, so that that way I get to spend more time hanging out with my husband. Okay. So, so you, you're, you're, are, you the, are you the exception to the rule, or are you the exception that proves think, the rule? Well, I guess I am a, a, a weirdo because I am proud that I work a 40-hour week okay. as a PhD physicist. Okay. And uh, there are some people who would think, oh my god, that's not enough. You have to devote more to science. And I'm like, nope, that is enough. That's enough? That is enough. And I like going to jazzercise and hanging out with my cats. Okay, so yeah. the discovery of the universe's uh, deep riddles will have to wait on your schedule. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Yeah. Because priorities. Because a thousand years from now, they look back on you. They, they won't comment that you took breaks, right? Yeah, yeah. No, they won't. But if you fail to It'll make be... that earth-shattering discovery, they'll just forget your name and you'll just blend in obscurity like the rest of us, right? That's cool. Okay, there you go. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, has re has work really become devoid of social worth now that you're an actress? Hmm. No, I think now. There is more social worth than when I was a project manager. <laughs> okay. So do you waste a lot of time at your new job? No, because, uh, uh, well, the job, a large part of the job is waiting for it to be time to do something. So, so are you wasting time waiting at a job that requires waiting? <laughs> no, I'm doing my job. You're working really hard I'm working. doing nothing. Exactly. I'm Look looking on my phone. Oh. I'm reading stuff. You know, that takes me an interesting segue. I'll, you know, I'll go to John because it's totally, totally unrelated. What uh -huh. do, you think, do you think the Kardashians waste time at their job, whatever that is? I don't know what their job is. That is their job. That is yeah. their job. Right? I guess their job is to be on a reality TV show and just talk about themselves and use foul language. Well, I think they normally talk about themselves. So they're doing their job all the time. They never yeah. rest. So are they, they are, are always doing their are job. They're the yeah. hardest, work, they're the hardest work. working people in television. Yeah. They're always you, in character. Do you wish you had their job? Because you like uh, talking about yourself. It sounds a lot more lax. Like, I've never seen a Kardashian show, so I'm not sure what work is involved. Mm -hmm. It's talking it about yourself. Sounds cushy. I could talk about myself. I'm not sure what I would say about myself. Okay. Um, don't, don't worry, John. I figure you, you, you know. We, I don't we, think my I've viewer... Seen, I've seen your show. We know what you'd say. <laughs> my, my, my show is pretty great. There you go. <laughs> Issue number four. If our minds meet, are we more likely to cheat? New research from the University of Nottingham, go merry men, uh, suggests that human cooperation has a dark side and that encourages corrupt behavior. According to the lead author, quote, collaborative settings, not just greed, can provide a fertile ground for corruption as typified by recent scandals in the football and banking worlds. I think by football they mean soccer, but anyway. But while much is known about immoral individual immoral behavior, little is known about collaborative roots of corruption, unquote. The study found the highest level of corrupt collaboration occurred when parties shared profits equally and were reduced when either player's incentive to lie was decreased or removed. I think we have some of the research footage here. He's sawing off the branch he's on. I wouldn't do this. Yes, he must. This is like a very poor decision. <laughs> this, it seems obvious from the outset how this is going to... Wait, no, he just leaped off. No, he leaped off into a thing. And went to yeah, I love those trust issues. Hey, yes. yeah. Kate, uh, yes. cooperation breeds corruption. Are you buying this or not? Um, yes. Because? Because... I have raised a teenage boy, okay. and he and his friends would just uh, convince each other to do all sorts of stupid and uh, dangerous activities, and... Like put on the invisible dog collar and then go across the, the fence. They... I had friends who did that. Did they? Yeah. <laughs> yeah? But that's not exactly corrupt, that's just stupid. <laughs> you know, I guess I did equate the two in my mind. But convincing your friend to do that right. is corrupt. Is it? Yeah. No, no, it hurts it's hilarious. Your friend. Yeah, it's don't hilarious. worry, nothing will happen. Yeah. You light yourself on fire. <laughs> this is Let's said by see. women who I, were not teenage boys. As a previous teenage boy, oh, okay. <laughs> that shit is hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> but you, didn't have, you didn't have YouTube back then, John. 
No, we have to like draw pictures very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Is that so? Is that yeah, so? Yeah. You could videotape it. That's right. You, we didn't have video. You didn't cameras. have video tape. No they were, cameras. Cameras were expensive. They back were expensive then. back then. They're expensive. Back no, like no that. teenage kid would be trusted with a camera, yeah. given that he's making his friend put a dog collar on. And yeah. Did they have like? Did they have the electric dog yeah. collars back in your day, John? No, I don't know what this is. This yeah. is and I'm, the, I'm the invisible fence. The invisible fence keeps so the dog. It shocks the dog and it crosses oh. a certain frequency line. Okay, so I don't think ahead. we had those. Well, yeah. you know, like, we didn't have a dog. I'm assuming they're adopting similar technology at your current company. Right. I can't talk about our answer. future products. Okay, there you go. But anyways, hey, CJ, <laughs> uh, you know, if, if cooperate, cooperation breeds corruption, would this explain uh, the efficiency of our government institutions and the integrity that they're, they're no, well, so well known for? You know, I think if you look at the roles of judges and lawyers who often play golf together, right. instead of really having the blind eye of justice, right. whose side are they really on? Are they just self-serving? They are cooperating on right. the golf mm -hmm. course, right. but in the courtroom, are they now strangers, or are they aligned in their own deviousness? Well, isn't the, isn't the reality that, that everyone is everyone in any situation is just somewhat self-motivated, correct? I would believe that's true, and unless you're in some communist society, which and hardly even, exists anymore. And, even the, 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 no, and would it be better that to, to establish a series of uh, incentives such that you offset people's attempt to cheat the system. It would make sense, All right. but there are those people that are going to cheat regardless. Isn't that why the justice system is considered an adversarial process? It's supposed to be. Oh, okay. But it, it, depends on, it depends on who the adversaries are and who your representatives are. Okay. And they're for all in cahoots together to cheat the IRS, then it's just one big play. Is it really? I think is so. That, is that what you tell your students while you're wearing your tinfoil hat? It's as I'm taking it off. As you're taking it off. Yes. Oh, okay. All right. All right. But anyways, so Andrea, uh, would, would this, uh, have you observed this phenomenon in academia, or, is it just, or does academia disprove it? So because I was trying to think of how this fits in with the first story, right? Because right. the first story mm -hmm. said that when someone else is affected by your decisions, then you do less risky things. Right. And that seems like a good thing. Right. But then you've got this one where now you're working with people, and now you're going to do corrupt things. And right. so they seem like they're at odds. Right. But sometimes doing the right thing is a risky thing. Right. And so maybe you don't want to do the right thing because it puts people in your company at risk. So for example, in science, if you have a result, like, and it doesn't, it's not showing that you found life on Mars, right. but as a scientist, you have to report it. Right. But that's risky. OK. All right. so. You have found mm. life on Mars. You're just suppressing it, right? Okay, all right. On to our second break. Mm. And we are back from our second break. Hey, for all those of you who want to follow us on the interwebs and the old social media, I believe our email address and our Twitter handle are somewhere below on the screen here. And uh, th feel free to send us a word. Hey, we're at the final segment of our show. This is the fact sec checking segment of our show. And for that, we rejoin Timothy Walton in our legal department. And this is where he tells us where it went wrong. Timothy, how do we do t on tonight's show? Actually, Jim, the panel did surprisingly well. Perhaps it was because these topics are so boring that nobody really came up with anything controversial to say. <laughs> but uh, there are some issues that I need to address just to avoid those people who inevitably will send emails uh, while they're drinking late at night and watching the show. So um, uh, first of all, Jim, um, ethics and psychotherapy, they're not the same thing. Just pointing that out. Oh, no, one's crazy, somebody right? Somebody else does. Okay. We'll say which one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. John, um, polls show that you are never too distracted to be a risk-taking jerk. Oh, okay. So there's um, that. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I'll keep that in mind. Uh, <laughs> CJ, making a quilt is like processing forms because of the patchwork of regulations creating bureaucracy. Oh, oh there you go. Stand corrected. Yeah, stand corrected. Yeah, too sure. yeah. Uh, so Let's see. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, Andrea, you are not a weirdo or an exception, as you claim. Lots of people insist that they are working a 40-hour week when they're not. <laughs> <laughs> so she really is watching cat videos? It's inspiration. Uh, let's see. Um, oh, also, uh, Jim, yes. neoliberal capitalism is not a real thing. <laughs> I'm, yeah, that was a quote. That's why I was a little skeptical. But uh, mm -hmm. actually, I believe the quote is classical 
Ah, liberal capitalism. But that's just me. Poli mm, well, major. then you're misquoting. That's true. I'm a poli uh, major, which is not a real science. Well, and along those lines, um, yeah. acting does not have more social worth than managing technical projects. Are no. you sure? <laughs> do and what's you uh, know what they do on those technical projects? <laughs> I'm pretty sure they're not standing around looking at their phones. <laughs> no, no. They're looking around, at your phone. <laughs> standing around eating donuts. Standing around eating donuts, right? And coffee. Donuts are good. Donuts Only are good. if you're lucky. That, that's, mm -hmm. that's very socially redeeming, eating donuts and drinking coffee, Timothy. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's up there with curing cancer. The donut makers? I, I don't know. Blessed are the donut eaters, for they shall see God. I believe that's a beatitude. I forget the verse. It's Maybe in, Andrea will help me out there. But. It's in the Bible. I have no idea. Verse Matthew uh, something. No. Nope. <laughs> My husband would know. Sermon on that. Right. Yeah. Uh, no, uh, I'm afraid that's not one of the beatitudes. That's in Proverbs. Okay. And he's the fact checker. Next yeah, episode. That's his job. He's fact checking me. Good. Yeah, good. I don't think he's doing it right, but. No. no. All right, I got a minute left, Timothy. How are we doing? it? Uh, well, let's see, um, Kate, I think I need to point out that um, teenage boys do stupid and dangerous things even when they're alone. <laughs> oh, my god. And goodness. they don't need cameras or dog collars. <laughs> Just uh, I thought we'd leave my games? childhood out of the show. <laughs> No, just your childhood, Jim. That's what I mean. My childhood out of the show, but okay. yeah. right. Yeah. So no, for we're, those we're, of us uh, who uh, who weren't teenage boys, do you have an example? Since we have no idea what you do when you're alone. We write love uh, letters to girls. That is dangerous. Who don't that could be like us. <laughs> oh, that, that describes my entire teenage years and I most know. of my twenties. Yeah, yeah. So. Just yeah. practice until you found the right. But one. it was email. Yeah. It was email by the time I hit my twenties. I think the internet was by, about Ooh. by then, right? Oh, we didn't have email there yet. I know. I know. <laughs> All right, Timothy. Thank you very much. We are done. Thank you very much for watching the show. Thank you for the panel. Thank you, the crew. Later. <laughs> 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 Ha, 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 ha.